trying to get in front of anybody, but I just feel like it, uh, I'm not going to try to preach. But I feel like it's time that uh, we hear God's word read. I believe every time that we come to God's house, that God's word word should be read in our people. We've got uh, kids go over and sit down. We've got kids that need to hear God's word. I'll tell you, I could listen to singing all night long, and, and it blesses my heart. But if anybody's ever going to get saved, it's going to come through God's Word. And that's what uh, we need to be doing today. But I've got just a verse or two I want to read to you, and I don't know why uh, the Lord put this on my heart, but I'm going to read it to you. Then I'm going to ask uh, Corey to sing a song of invitation. Uh, I believe that two things need to happen. I'm going to say this before I go any further. Two things need to happen every time we gather in God's house. God's word needs to be read and there needs to be an altar call. Amen. We uh, forget about that too many times. And, and that's an important part. That's the most important part uh, right there. But Hebrews chapter number 6, I'm just going to start reading verse 1 and I'm going to read down to about verse 9 uh, or 10. And he said, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, and of the doctrine of baptisms, and laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do, if God permit. Uh, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God. Ain't it good? Amen. Ain't God's word Amen. good tonight? And he said, and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again and to repent, and seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Uh, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh to curse, and whose end is to be burned. This is what I want us to look at tonight. Uh, verse number 9 said, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed uh, toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And I, I just want us to look at that one verse. I, and I thought about this as we were sitting there. I, I'm so thankful uh, to where our church is at right now from where it was two months ago. Amen. I'm so thankful for God is bringing us. But God's not done. God's got better things for each and every one of us. God's got better things uh, for Mount Olive Baptist Church. And I, I want to encourage, uh, I preached the other day, let us not be weary and well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now's not the time uh, to sit on the back burner. Now's not the time uh, to give up and quit. But he's persuaded. That's what he said, persuaded. And it means to be fully convinced. That's what that word means. In, in Webster's Dictionary, you look it up, and you can run your references in the Hebrew uh, Dictionary. It means the same thing, to be fully convinced. So that's what he said. I believe that Paul wrote that letter. So Paul said, uh, there he said, I'm fully convinced better things for you. And better things from you today. And I, like I said, I know the church is doing good. It's doing better than, than it has in a long time, I feel like. But God has got to work for us today. When we read on down in that scripture, what kind of better things does he want from us? He wants the things that accompany salvation. Amen. Amen. I, brother, there's things that goes along with being saved. There's things that goes after. I, God didn't save me. Uh, by my works, but he saved me unto a work. And I, I tell you, we've got to do that. We've got to keep on the firing line and we've got to keep pressing forward. Uh, as Paul said to that mark, that high calling of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So what goes with salvation? Uh, brother, I, I say, I've been preaching it a lot lately. This word uh, accompanies salvation today. Our life that we live, our faithfulness uh, to the Lord and to the house of God, that accompanies salvation. I preached up from that one time. A, brother, a saved person, a saved man, woman, boy, or girl, they've got symptoms. You got If you get some kind of illness or something, there's symptoms that goes along with that. If you're saved, there's symptoms that goes along with that. I shouldn't have to wear 
a bumper sticker for people to know that I've been born again. I shouldn't have uh, to hold up a banner saying I'm saved, brother. My life and my attitude and my actions and the way I handle different situations, that ought to show people that I've been born again. That ought to show people uh, that I've been to Calvary. I thought about that, brother. I, I, I may preach on that one time, brother. Uh, when they took Jesus up there to Mount Calvary, they hung him uh, between two thieves. They hung him between two malefactors. But, and I thought about as I studied that, I've never been overseas. I've never been to Israel. I've never actually set foot on that ground, but I'm thankful today I've been to Calvary. I've been born again. I'm saved by God's grace, and I'll tell you what, I, an old preacher said it like this one time. He said, I believe I could swing over hell on a rotten grapevine, and I'll not fall in it. Why? Because I'm born again, uh, saved by God's precious blood. Uh, saved by His Son and what He did for me. And I, I said I wasn't going to preach, and I, I, I'm just going to mind the Lord, but I I believe I'm going to ask everybody tonight if you would to stand. I'm going to ask Corey to come and I, I beg of you. If you need to pray, you come to this altar. If you're here and you're not saved, not tonight is a good night for you to get born again. If you're here tonight, you've got something in your life that's holding you back, something that's hindering you. Uh, tonight would be a good night to fix it up. We've got a revival in about 10 days. And I, I'll tell you, I said this the other day. Uh, don't you wait till we're halfway through revival or till we're under over with revival to come and get things right with God. Do it right now. Amen. And God will bless you if you'll do that. And God will bless this church and he'll bless that revival. Don't hold uh, back this revival tonight. Go ahead. I'm, I'm done. God help. You need to break up. 